Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Titan, and I want to record a brand new video on the brand new version of Floating Sandbox, version 1.14. It's hard to believe that I managed to get this far with Floating Sandbox. Honestly, the game is actually pretty fun. It's so interesting to watch the ships think and, you know, break apart and do whatever you want to it. I go for more historically accurate sinking, as you guys may have noticed. But... Every so often I like to go a bit crazy. So we have uh, the default model of the Titanic that, that loads up when the game starts. So let's just sync this. Um, because of the atrociously loud uh, volume setting in the sh on the regular version of the game, I turned it down so you guys could hear my voice better. Um, don't worry, that will be fixed when uh, I turn off this microphone. So I'm recording this video for Titanic Week. The unofficial uh, remembrance for the what happened to the Titanic and um, honestly it's hard to believe that the ship is over a hundred and eight years old um, it's lasted this long under the sea and it's quite impressive actually many other wrecks have decayed a lot faster what's even more impressive is that we still have um, some very historical some very impressive historical ships that are still here, per se. We have the HMSH Britannic, which is in shallower water than Titanic, and will probably keep up with us for a lot longer. There is a Lusitania, which is in bad condition, but it's still there. Um, we have the Empress of Ireland, which is also still here. We have a bunch of ships that are still around with us. It's just that Titanic is the main focus because that's when sinking ships became a bigger part in human culture. Um, in the, and I want to explain something to you guys who kept complaining how the ships always bend in floating sandbox when I sink them. Let's say you grab a long piece of metal. It doesn't. It, it has to be pretty long. And you try and you lift and you set that metal on the ground. Then you try to lift one side of that metal up. The metal will bend because the weight on all the side opposite of the, the side you're holding is being put against the force of you lifting it up. It's similar to ships. Ships naturally bend in the wave, but you don't notice it because it's very subtle. In this example right here, we see that the Titanic is bending, and the bending point is around the middle of the ship. Since the ship is aka long, pretty, pretty long in the, in the game at least, the bow is being forced downward by the by all the air escaping out and back to the stern. So the weight of the bow is quote unquote increasing. Meanwhile the stern is lighter than the bow, so the bow is going down, lifting the stern up. And this 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 contrast between the two extremes causes the ship to bend. And in some cases when the ship bends too much, it breaks, which is what Roy Manoir believes happened. See, what he believed happened was that the ship, per se like this, was bending a lot. And you can even see in the mast, like the mast is really strange. So if I was to cut this, the ropes just kind of snap back because it's being bent with the ship. So Roy Manoir, anyways, anyways, Roy Manoir believed that the keel, the bottom of the ship, broke first compared to... The, back, the, the top of the ship. You can even see that this section right here in this model is the upper decks. These are built separate from the rest of the ship. So what he believed was the ship broke in the bottom. And the upper decks failed as well. So, after the ship broke like that, the ship actually broke into a few different sections. There's the aft tower, there's a forward tower, and then there's an aft tower. Leaving the stern to be pretty much like this. And the bow section, of course. Now the stern... Oh. Yeah, we have some collision down here. And the ship crumbling apart even more. This is the forward tower, and this is the aft tower. 
So the stern was pretty much left to its own devices. And in real in the real world, a clean break of a ship would actually leave the, sh the ship in like two different ships. But a break like the Royman Wa break would actually leave the ship susceptible to sinking. So the stern here would be able to flood a lot more. Look, it's actually collapsing like how, how it did in real life. Except that's far more extreme. The upper section here collapsed completely. And the stern here is just, you know, casually sinking, doing its stern things. The st in the more in the Minois breakup theory, it's believed the stern stayed afloat for about five minutes before completely submerging. Now, many people that I've met seem to believe that you need to flood the entire ship, all the ship gone with air, all the ship out of water, with just still water for it to sink. That's not necessarily true. See, so in order for the ship to completely sink, <clears throat> most of the of the air in the ship has to be gone, not all. So, technically speaking, this stern could be half filled with could be filled with air in this section, but this section is the heavier one, so it pulls the stern down, and this this section goes with the the rest. So the stern will sink, but it will still have air in it. That's actually what causes implosions. Implosions are simply when um, high pressure, low pressure containers are put in high pressure areas. And then the low pressure, the high pressure crushes the low pressure container. So simply put, the stern suffered an implosion when it was sinking. As you can see, there's still air inside the stern as it's going down. So by this point, the stern would start imploding and cause the destruction that we see on the stern today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. It's actually a couple weeks before I turned 18, which is quite funny. I was born just a few weeks after Titanic sank. And I hope you guys like, you know, enjoy all the stuff I've been doing. You guys actually do enjoy all the stuff I'm doing. It's quite amazing, honestly. And I thank you all for that. Um, I don't think I'll be posting a lot of videos after this one, kind of because, you know, I've kind of lost a little bit of interest in it. Well, I've lost interest until I get back into Ben 10, which is going to happen very soon. Um, and you guys, you guys are awesome, really. You guys are all the best. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic life. This crisis going on right now is a pretty big gamper. And I see no reason to, you know, keep on talking. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and all the videos I have. Please do whatever you want. I don't care if you subscribe, that's good. If you don't, that's all right. I don't mind. And I bid you all farewell.